I'm Robin Gagnon. And I'm Eric Gagnon, and we sell restaurants. We started the nation's largest restaurant brokerage firm, We Sell Restaurants, over a decade ago. You can find us online at WeSellRestaurants.com. We are on your radio once a week with the leading authorities in this industry talking about subjects trending in the restaurant business. Tweet your own questions on our subjects while we're on the air to our Twitter handle, Sell Restaurants, or post them on our Facebook page. Remember, that's Facebook.com backslash We Sell Restaurants. If we don't get to your question, we'll follow up on social media. Our goal is to satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. If you have any ideas for the show or any comments, you can email me. My email address is eric, E-R-I-C, at wesellrestaurants.com. Today, we are talking about restaurant incubators. That's right. That term, once heard only around techie college campuses, is now being applied to restaurants as entrepreneurs seek funding paired with support, capital, and more. The incubator concept is paying off for the industry, startups looking for opportunity, and those of us that love to experience the latest food concept. We are interviewing Phil Romano, the creator of concepts like Macaroni Grill, Eatsies, and Fuddruckers, who has turned his attention to this strategy and founded the restaurant concept incubator program called Trinity Groves in Texas, where he and his investors find and fund the next big thing. Phil Romano is an investor, entrepreneur, artist, and nationally renowned restaurateur. He created six national restaurant concepts, Fuddruckers, Romano's Macaroni Grill, Spaghetti's, Cozumel's, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, and Easy's Market and Bakery that all have generated more than $20 billion in revenue. Nation's Restaurant News named Mr. Romano as one of the top 20 restaurateurs in the year 2000. They also awarded him the 1995 Innovator of the Year Award. He has received the Food Service Consultant Society International Trendsetter Award, along with being named one of the top 100 innovative and inspiring marketers who have most successfully established or repositioned a brand. Romano currently owns and operates the following restaurant concepts, Eatsy's, Nick and Sam's, Nick and Sam's Grill, Cole Vines Pizza. His creativity expands beyond restaurants to art. He began painting 30 years ago and has sold over a million dollars of his own artwork. Romano is also a humanitarian. His charitable foundation, Hunger Busters, provides food for the hungry and serves over 150,000 school children in Dallas. He is now becoming a catalyst for the inventions of a new generation of restaurant entrepreneurs with his incubator concept, Trinity Groves, in Dallas, Texas. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about the Restaurant Concept Incubator Program? I guess we're basically doing for the government what the government can't do for itself. We're creating jobs and opportunities for young people, mainly the millennials. They're a new market. They think differently, act differently. They are different a little bit. You know, they don't want anything that we left them. I call them new people. (laughs) And uh, they like everything new. They don't like what we've done. They don't want the environment that we left them. They don't want to... The educational system, the government, how they change their government. So, you know, they want they want it their way. Rightly so. You know, it's their world. They want to live in it. Let them live in it the way they want to and, and just give them the room to do it. Understand what they need and what they want and provide it for them. And that's what I am. I'm an entrepreneur, and I understand people's needs, and I suffice them. That's why I've been successful at what I do. Now, I'm looking at what they need now. They're, they need they need opportunities, and they need uh uh, jobs and careers, you know, their, their, their unemployment is 30% above the national average or below whatever you want to, how you want to address it. But, and it's, and they need, they need these opportunities and the government can't provide a form. It's got to be free enterprise. So we've been buying this land over here in, in West Dallas for, for 10 years now. And it's, you know, and when the bridge was just a rumor, the bridge became a reality, uh, by Cal Trava, a very famous bridge builder. And, uh, it's been, been completed, and, and I think we got the most recognizable destination area in Dallas. It was old, it was old you know, kind of dilapidated, uh, um, kind of not very nice part of town. And we've cleaned it up. We've got all these old buildings over here. And I said, you know, we've been buying this land, and we've accumulated almost, oh, we, right now we got 80 acres, and we got more under contract, so maybe it'd be 100 acres by the time we get done. But it's like a like a dog chasing a car, you know, when he catches a car, what's he do with it? Here we get all this land and, you know, and I, I know what I don't know. I'm not a developer. I'm, a, you know, basically a restaurateur and a businessman and so forth. But, you know, what are we going to do with this? So, you know, we thought about it and thought about it. And, and what we had to do is 
proved that they'd come across the river over on the bridge, uh, general public. So I think the old adage goes that anybody will go anywhere for to a good restaurant. I think right you're right. A bad part of town for a good restaurant or travel so far for a good restaurant. And I'm saying, well, what if I put a, a group of good restaurants together? You know, what kind of attraction would that have? Would that work? And I said, well, that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it, you know, to attract this millennial market, the millennials. So I said, uh, uh, how do I do that? You know, and well, what I want to do is create restaurant concepts. I want to incubate restaurant concepts because my industry, I think, needs them, you know, because all these major uh, companies out there got these concepts. They're, they're old or tired, and these millennials don't like them. They're tired of them. They went there with their kids. Their mother and father brought them there, you know. They want something new and different and exciting. You know, they, this casual dining business, it's all blurry if you ask me, and they want something new and different, their taste, their favor, and all that kind of stuff. So I said, who better to create new concepts for new people but new people? So we've got... You know, we got them in here, it's kind of quasi Shark Tank, but the real thing. We got them in, and, and uh, we got the word out, and we got all of them to come in, and we started interviewing them. If they got a good idea, and uh, they want to control and own their own destiny, and own their own business, and, and be, you know, part of something that's going to grow and make them make them successful in life, then come see us. So, I know what it takes for a restaurant to grow the size and what it has to have. And it has to have, I, we got it now where it's 2,500 square feet, air conditioned inside with a kitchen and so forth, plus outside patio, it'll seat about 125 seats. It's gotta do a million and a half dollars a year in sales. You can't put more than $500,000 in a finish out. And it's gotta be owner operated and unique and different. And there's no guarantees on the leases. Now, we interview these people. They come in and they, you know, they tell us their idea and they, they express themselves about what they want to do. And, and, they, and we like the idea. So we, we tell them to make up a five-page business plan with some renderings, some floor plans, or, you know, just floor plans. And uh, what your menu would be, your pricing, the, the theme of the restaurant, the concept itself, your point of difference. Uh, a little basic projections on the P&Ls, and um, just to see if, what they understand and what they don't understand and all. So we bring them through that process, and then we start tasting. We like it. And we say, okay, well, it looks good. Then we'll start tasting their food. And we have two or three tastings, so we make sure it's consistent. And I got a you know, team of chefs that you know, taste their food and, and see what they think. And then if we like them and they pass mustard, we'll say, okay, you could come in, we'll give you a location. And the first thing they say is, well, you know, we're new. We're a new person. We're new. We don't have $500,000 to put in here. Right. So what we tell them is, I'll tell you what we've done. We've gotten the community involved and the businessmen in town involved and vendors involved. And we put a fund together, an entrepreneurial fund. And we've got um, almost $9 million in it. Wow. Now, what we do is we tell them that we'll fund your concept up to five hundred thousand dollars, we'll fund it. And what we do if we fund it, we will own fifty percent of the concept, and we'll be the general partner. Mm. And all you do is operate the restaurant, day-to-day -day operations. You, you keep the people happy, keep the food good, keep the service great. We do all the back of the house for you. Wow. Got a five percent. We give them a five percent. We charge them five percent management fee for the um, uh, for doing this. But we do all the P and L, pay out our taxes, and we also get the the I guess the economy to scale. Like we got a preferred vendors. We get the best prices you could possibly get on insurance, on garbage, on on, on our food itself. You know, with U.S. Foods, we got a great deal, better than I've ever seen. Because they figure that if some of this does works, you know, they got a pipeline created because there's going to be a bunch of these make, done up. So they're they're in line with us. So we, we got all this happening. But we, we get their P&Ls. We read them like a novel. they got to meet a particular uh, uh, matrix for sales. they got to do that million and a half or they're out of here. And they got to have a, a profit matrix they got to hit also. And we, we, we meet with them constantly, you know. We, we, before we even opened up, we had a big, you know, we had classes with these kids. 
and, um, and you know, to get the culture going and let them understand, you know, about garbage in and garbage out. All the POS comes into one place. They don't really handle any money. We handle that for them. They, they send us their bills, and we, we write the checks, and they sign the checks. But uh, we, we control the whole thing because we owe a fiduciary duty to the, to the fund. But um, so these, you know, so the end result is these kids come in, or young people come in, and they, uh, you know, put no money in. They get up at bat, take a swing. If they hit a home run, God bless them. If they don't, they, the next can the guy up. It's like doing, like doing an oil well. If, if, uh, if it fails, you know, if it's a dry hole, you got to move everything. you got to take it away and move it. Well, here, you don't move anything because the fund owns all the CapEx. Mm. All we do now is replace the driller. That's Put a new right. team in place. That's right. If, Phil, you had- in place. We changed the decor a little bit. The kitchens are very generic. Oh, they're very, you know, ambidextrous. You could do what you want to do out of them. And it's, so it's, we're, always, we're always going to have a, a, somebody there. It's always going to be producing. And the general public gets to see new and different things all the time. How many applicants do you guys typically have, and how often do you actually replace uh, uh, concepts? And- well, we've, uh, we have to have, we, right now we haven't replaced anybody. Everybody's doing oh. well over, over a million dollars, or two million and a half dollars. We're, we're close to... Our average is almost a little bit over $2 million for, per store. Wow. We're doing well there. And, you know, it's, it's um, you know, the, the reality of it is that the, you know, there's no debt service on this because it's a equity funded. So the profit, if they do, you know, $2 million worth of sales here like they are, they're going to be throwing off, you know, 300 plus a year in profit. Now that's a, that's $150,000 back to the fund, see about a $9 million investment. That's an excellent return in an industry that's really not known for um, teeing off big returns to investors because of the risk. And, you know, what's so interesting to me is that you, as an entrepreneur in this industry, you've had so many uh, different restaurant ideas that have come to fruition. How did it occur to you to sit on the other t- side of the table and say, I'm going to let the ideas come to me and then just gauge those ideas rather than jumping in with your own? We, we do. Their ideas are good. But, you know, my involvement complements their ideas, okay? We, we, we kind of add to it, massage it, make it better for them. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's okay by itself, but we're there to help them. We're there to, to help them become successful because if they're successful, we're successful. So that's... You know, that's, but, you know, but the other thing is that, you know, there, there's been three parts of my life. One is, one is, uh, uh, you know, trying to make money when I was young, you know, I wanted to make a lot of money, and, you know, that power. The next phase of my life was, uh, was uh, doing things for uh, social recognition so people know who I was and what I was doing, you know. But the third part of my life, which I'm in now, is, uh, you know, the twilight zone, if you call it that. But I'm, it's, it's a part of my life that, I, I do things for the intrinsic value. I do things because it makes me feel good. It's giving back. You know, it's helping. It's helping. Heck, it's, it's, it's helping the young people. It's getting them jobs, creating, doing for the government again, doing for the government what the government can't do. We've created over probably coming up to 600, 600 jobs out here now. Wow. And careers That's... and things. And see, the big thing is this is going to make money for for them and for the investors if it just stays here. Now, if one of them decides we want to move it out because it meets these criteria. It's a candidate for multiple, multiple concept. Right. And, and, and Dallas alone, well, our Metroplex, you could have 10 of these things up in no time flat, and you know, all of a sudden the guys have changed. Now, Phil, you see a lot of people will propose to you guys, and uh, you see the concept that you have in, in your, in your uh, Trinity Grove right now, but do you see a lot of people, you know, you, you keep talking about, hey, I do what I do best, they do what they do best. Like a lot of people are, are great chefs or great operators, like you said, poor at keeping up with the books, or they're really good at keeping up with the books, not as good as the front or the back of the house. How, how do you see that in general right now in, in the restaurant world as far as uh, strengths and weaknesses, and what should people do to, you know, hey, stick to your strength and, and build a team for your weaknesses? Well, it's the old, old adage, you know, you got to know what you know and know what you don't know. I've, I've been successful at what I do because I do what I do best. In other words, I'm an entrepreneur. I'll start a concept. Okay, because I, that, that suffices a need. It's doing something that people really need to have. I'll, I'll do that concept, and I'll get it going. I'll work it. 
I'll make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. And as soon as it's off and running and doing well, then what do I do? I turn it over to somebody else. Then I bring professional management in and say, here, you take it now. I either sell it off to a major company, joint venture it with a major company, it's already got everything created to, to make it grow. And I, it's just not my stick. I don't like to, to operate things on a constant basis. It's like eating the same food every, every day, <laughs> doing the same thing every day. It's not my stick. I got to do new and different things, you know. And, and so I, 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 I sell it to them or I joint venture it with them and I turn it out to somebody else to take it the rest of the way, take it to the moon. A lot of entrepreneurs who start businesses think they got the ability to take it to the moon and they fall flat. I think that is so very true. And, and the customer response is amazing. These $2 million and 2,500 square feet is a big, big number for startups. So it seems like the public is definitely engaged in turning out. Now, is this because of the marketing or is it the buzz created around the concept or is it the quality of the concepts and originality of the food? What's driving all those mouths to feed right over there? As you said, you brought them over the river. Well, I think it's, a, it's, it's probably all three of those. I think, you know, I, I've been going out and I've been giving a lot of speeches and talks and everything else about this and, it's, it's, uh, and, and, and just telling the general public that this is what we're doing here and it's, it's, it's a good project. It's, it's, it's good because it's helping young people creating jobs. But I need your help to make it successful. I need you to come out here and, and participate. You know, you could go in any restaurant in Dallas, okay, and you're going to get good food and good service and okay stuff, okay? Well, you could do the same thing here. But you're getting something extra. You're getting some rap. You're helping people. You're helping the economy. You're helping young people get jobs and employment. And, and it's, it's, this is what's good for America. You know, I think... Starting businesses is the key to the, to the success of an economy. You know, the velocity of small businesses being open is what makes the economy the economy that we should have. And it scares me today because I've been reading that business are, businesses now are closing faster than they're opening. Oh, terrible. It is. And, and here, you know, and, and it's not, you know, I don't have any government intervention. Well, I got government intervention through all these regulations, but... But still in all, it's here. So I, I, I appeal to the people to come and help make this thing successful. It's number one that I, that I think is good. And the other thing is that people want something new and something different. I mean, that's probably why there's so many divorces today. But you look at, <laughs> look at, the, <laughs> you look at that, and, and they want something new. They're tired of the same old stuff all the time. Okay? And, the, and these young people want places where they can go to right. and enjoy, which they do. Because the big outside deal is like, you know, it's some place where they could they could come and they could make it evolve and enjoy. Phil, some of our listeners are probably uh, thinking right now, "Wow, would that be great to have that in, in my city or uh, any city?" Any any plans to take this concept that's been usually successful and start maybe looking at other cities? Oh, maybe got, Atlanta. We got people from all over the country coming to us, <laughs> wanting to understand this and see this. So, so you know, we we'll probably you know I got enough to chew down here, but. We're looking at, you know, we got as much of this thing protected as we could. Cause this, is, this has never been done before. And, and the irony of it is, the irony of it is, is that, that, that it, what, what we're doing here is, is creating brands. We don't, we're not out there trying to get tenants. We're creating our own tenants. That's right. Correct. We own 50% of their success. Mm -hmm. And if they're not successful, well, we put somebody else in there and let him try it. And we own 50% of his success. What we're doing down here is creating brands, whether it's Bed Bath & Beyond or, or, or a restaurant, it had to have its first location with a young person, a lot of energy and a good idea and a proper financing, that could become a brand. And that's what we're doing down here, creating brands. And uh, right now, the critical mass right now is restaurants, but we got other things down here. We got a, a chocolatier, we're going to have off-Broadway theater, we got, we got a brewery, we got a, 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 a you know, things that, uh, the event center and stuff like this that, that are, I mean, we'll have retail, retail down here too, which will be, uh, you know, uh, art galleries and young designers that clothes designers and stuff like this down here, you know, but, but we'll, we, we help them and we own part of it. I mean, it's like, just think of the equity that, that we have at our hands when you're looking at, at having 20 restaurant concepts that we control and that are quasi successful and can be even more successful. 
it's just really unbelievable. When I look at this development, you really did um, take the traditional real estate model and turn it inside out. Because generally speaking, developers look at a plot of ground, ground and they say, okay, let's get some people to live there. So we're going to throw in as much multi-unit density as we can, and then we'll put some retail with it and develop in some restaurants so there's a population base. And you just literally took that inside out and said, I'm going to build the destination to the restaurant scene first, and then everything else is following. Now, when you first started out talking to those people in the development world and putting this fund together, did they say to you, Phil, you've got it backwards? This is craziness? Yeah, well, that's what I do. You know, I'm, I, I, if I didn't do the things that people told me not to do, I would <laughs> not be where I am today. We did this thing ass backwards, like you said. We, what we did was we put the amenities down here first, and now we're putting the community down here. And we just got a, a very, very uh, prestigious developer coming in here now, uh, partnering with us to put the, put the apartments back here. Just committed to do a thousand apartments. Okay, so, and then we got more, more coming in too. So now we're putting the community. So now, got, now they got the community's got a reason to exist. Very, uh, you know, good location, very accessible, uh, uh, road-wise, uh, traffic-wise. The bridge is on the other side. They got a great view of the city. It's, uh, it's, it, it's working. So would this be to possibly your, your new concept, instead of restaurant concept, maybe selling this, uh, this uh, you know, Trinity Grove concept to, like, developers like North American Properties and some of the larger people that may want to kind of build something, give back, and, and go and after the millennials, like you said, and then have a new way of creating, you know, communities and, and redevelopment into parts of the country? Correct, correct. I mean, you know, this is this is – Something to do with, with, with restaurants, I guess, and, and it's that eating market, and, and that that appeals to people. But in any any city you go to, there's there's these young chefs and young people that, that got good ideas, and they have no way of expressing them or doing them or making them a reality. I mean, it's just just they're the diamonds in the rough, and nobody notices them. And everybody said, "Oh, we got to get this model out there, and and and." You know, we got to build it, and then we got to get the tenants, and we got to charge them the rent, and we got to get guarantees, and we got to do this, we got to do that. And if it's successful, uh, good, they're just going to keep paying their rent. If it's not successful, well, we kick them out of there. Right. Well, sure. I'm going to, it's not going to cost me any more or any less because we charge them rent. We charge them a 6% of the gross sales. If they're doing a business, they pay the rent. So we're getting the rent, but we're also owning 50% of them, but we're helping them. And I think. You know, the persona, I mean, I, you know, I've been in the business for a while. A lot of people know what I've done and everything else. So the persona, what I'm capable of doing, uh, is, is, is attractive to the concept, too. Remember, today's show is sponsored in part by Today's Restaurant, the food service industry newspaper, and one of our sponsors. To get your free subscri- subscription, visit their website, trnusa.com. This is Eric and Robin Gagnon. We've been talking to Phil Romano as we satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. 